So that was kind of sneaky, right? And I hope this is coming to your um, inbox. Um, you had to opt in in order to get the second video. And the second video uh, you only got if the email actually got to you. So anyhow, let's go through here. So over the next couple of days, I'm going to send you several emails with videos on how to do this and how to do this well. So the first thing that we need to do, and I'm going to do it with Namecheap. There's actually, when you go here, you see there is a Namecheap, a Namecheap instructions on how to do this. So the first thing that I do is I take the C name down here, and it's email.replies. And I'm going to, and it goes to mailgun.org. This is always the same. It's email dot, and then uh, whatever your subdomain is that you chose, and then your domain. So I'm going to go to Namecheap, and you see I already have two records in there. Those are so that I can actually do funnels in compliantly. And so I'm going to add a new record, and it's going to be a C name. The host is going to be email dot replies without the dot and the target's going to be mailgun.org. I always set my TTLs to five minutes because if I have to change something, I only have to wait five minutes and not forever. So let's check, make sure that this is correct. The email replies at the C name, mailgun.org, email.replies, mailgun.org. So the next ones are MXs. And you see here, it's just replies and it's a priority of 10, and they go to two different servers. It's the same thing, MXA and MXB. So I'm just gonna copy one so that I don't have to type it in. And I'm gonna go here, and uh, Namecheap actually has uh, different settings for mail. So I'm gonna do a custom MX here. And that custom MX, um, we have replies, and I go into MXA. And the priority was 10, and the TTL, again, I'm going to five minutes. So I'm going to save these changes here. And then I'm going to add another um, MX record. And it's, again, replies. And it goes to mxb.mailbun.org. Again, priority 10, five minutes. There we go. So now we have the MXs in. Let's do the text record. Now this text record is always also the same. So we have a text record. This is actually an SPF record. This is a spam security record. The same thing with this one here. This is a DKIM record. DKIM is also for security purposes. This is always different. This is on, based on domain. The, the top text record is always the same. V equals SPF1 include mailgun.org or uh, and for the host name replies. Let's do that. So I copied that one. I'm gonna go to the top here again and I'm gonna add a new record and this time it is a text record. And the host is, I think it was replies, correct? The value was this. And then the TTL is five again. Let's save it. Let's make sure that it was replies. Yes. So the next host name here is K1 underscore domain key dot replies. And it is this. So I'm going to go over here. A new record. It's going to be a text record. The host, I just copied it. And see, it shows you if you have the additional dot in there. And then the value, we're going to go over here and we're going to copy that. And I'm going to throw that in here. Now, if you had set up the DKIM to be uh, the 2048, this here would be a much larger uh, field. So again, TTL to five minutes and check. These are now the records that we put in. We have three records up here and we have two MX records. Now what we need to do is we need to verify that domain. And there is a verify button somewhere here. See, verify DNS settings. And what that will do, it will go and check if those DNS settings are there. Sometimes this takes time, sometimes it is done right away. So let's just verify it and see. Okay, so the C name is okay, the MX is okay, the text records is okay, the top text record here is not okay for whatever reason, because you know, see here, the current value is all. Maybe it just needs a little bit 
And so um, what you need to do now before you continue, you need to have all of them correct. So what you could do here is you could go and copy this here again, go over to Namecheap, look at your SPF, and maybe just paste it there again. And um, sometimes it takes time. And so uh, let's verify the DNS settings again. And if it doesn't check out, then I'm just gonna pause the video. Um, and uh, and uh, basically you need to wait on your own domain until you actually have it verified. So let's just click the verify button again. And boom, this is what happens if it gets verified. So we can now go to domain settings here. The DNS records, you see here on the DNS records, we have all green check marks. And what that means now at this point in time, um, Mailgun can be used. But here's the problem. We actually are missing a record. And um, I'm gonna go grab that, I'm gonna show it to you. And the reason why we're missing that is I'm gonna show it to you as well. So I'm in uh, the compliant membership site here. And uh, this is actually uh, for our coaching members. And there is, of course, also these instructions on how to do this. And um, what we have here, as you see here, I actually put the record uh, below this. Uh, it is called a DMARC record. And what I like to use is you can use reject or you can use none. I like to use the reject. And so the text record is DMARC and then the domain. So. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna enter this. So let me just copy the entire thing here. So I'm back over at Mailgun, but that's not where I need to enter it. I need to enter it in uh, Namecheap. So this is actually a text record. So I'm gonna take the text record and then I'm just gonna copy the entire thing in there and just copy the ones out that I need. So. So DMARC, your domain.com, it's right there. So what's the domain? It replies, so DMARC.replies. And then what the value is, is V equals DMARC1. And I like to reject. And um, I'm just gonna delete the rest of it. So this is what it needs to look like for this domain. Um, it's dmark dot replies and v equals dmark one p equals reject. You can also use none, but none basically means that if a domain is not uh, authenticated, that it won't do anything. With reject, it will just send the email back. So um, this is techno mumbo jumbo. If you really want to know why this is. Um, you know, we can do that in a in a uh, live session, but uh, for this video, that just goes too far. So again, TTL to five minutes. Now, when you look at this, this is exactly what you need in order to set this domain up in compliance. Now we have www, we have the main domain, email dot replies, we have replies, we have the SPF record, we have a C name, and um, then also we have two custom MXs in here. And that should give us now the chance to just set it up. So what that means is our domain is set up correctly. Now there is one other thing that I want you to do. And again, uh, you just got to leave me that that is what you're supposed to do in order to have good deliverability. And you're going to go into your Mailgun account and you're going to turn on the unsubscribes. And um, I also like click tracking and open tracking on, but that will get set up automatically. Now you can customize your unsubscribes by going here and basically uh, going there, uh, what you want to have. You can have multiple breaks, you can shove it uh, down in the email and whatever. But what this does, it basically automatically adds an unsubscribe to every email. If you don't want that, then you gotta switch it to off. But if it is on off and you don't have an unsubscribe, 
it's bad for your deliver deliverability, or it's it's worse for your deliverability. It's not necessarily completely bad, but you're gonna have less uh, deliverability. So now we have replies uh, dot get to inbox dot com in there, and now I need to set this up so that this is actually in compliantly. Okay, so I'm back in compliantly, and what we have right now is we have replies.reputationjudge.com set up, but since I want to do the email thing, I'm going to set that up. So I'm going to go in the back end, and I'm not going to show how I do this. Um, this is basically the agency side of uh, compliantly, and if you're working with compliantly, then just let me know, and I can set this up for you. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. It's going to be replies. Um, get to inbox.com here in a second. So let me just go and do that. So now I was over there in my agency settings, and I just exchanged the domain. And let's refresh it to see if it is exchanged. Okay. So here we are. We have replies. So get to inbox.com is set up. So what we now need to do is we need to test this. You know, do we have decent deliverability? In um, in a future video, I'm actually going to show you why I'm doing what I'm doing. But right now, I'm just going to do it in order to show you how to set this up. So you're going to get another video that goes a little bit deeper into this. But I want to set this up right now. So I go to my contacts, and I have a contact in here that's called Mail Genius. The contact mail genius uh, actually is to test. So let's just go to mailgenius.com and let's copy this uh, address here, email address. Go over there, just put it in the mail genius contact into the email address and save it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this email here, we're going to send the exact same email. I'm going to grab this, and you see the subject line is say there. I'm going to copy it and go into email. Just going to paste it in there. And the subject line is hey there. Now, what you see is my from email is jhopshed at iCloud.com. I'm going to change that because I want to get good deliverability right away. So we're going to go from jhopshed at iCloud.com to replies at or replies dot get to inbox dot com. So what I have here is I've just changed my from email. This can be changed um, um, permanently for a campaign, and um, I can show you how to do this in compliantly. But at this point in time, I just want to check if my email uh, score is good. So let's do that. So the email has been sent. August 10, uh, 2021. That's right now. So let's just go over there. When I click on see your score, it's going to take a couple of seconds. Now 15 to 30, it says here. Sometimes it takes a little longer than that. I'm going to push pause until this is done. Okay. And there we are. Um, my mail genius score is 97. And there is things to fix. And what it says here is the domain age. Your domain is very young. Yes, I just registered it for this purpose. So this is a very young domain. And then it says message body. What you can do is you can go in here and check what it is. And basically what it says is, OK, you have a tracking link. And that tracking link is too long. This is something that you can't fix. So you're going to have to live with it. Um, 97. Between 97 and 99 uh, is what you can expect it to be. It's always going to be in that range. Now, what I also want you to see is you can go here to email preview. You can go to raw email. And you can see here at the bottom what IP address you're sending from. And I'm going to go and I'm going to show you the sender score for this IP address. This is something that you need to know as well. So we're going to go a little bit deeper in an additional video on this, but this is sendascore.org. And at sendascore.org, I just tie myself up. These tools are free. Mail Genius is free. Sendascore is free. And I'm going to copy that 
IP address in there. Now this is, as we set this up, this is a, a Mailgun shared IP address. So let's see what that tender score is. Not too bad, it's A8. So you see here, they know me already. Um, and it tells you, gives you a little bit statistics on what has happened on this domain, and it looks pretty cool. So 88 is good, that's where you wanna be. If it is lower, if this goes yellow or red, you can actually ask Mailgun to move you to a different domain. So that's it for the video today. This is how you set up Mailgun um, and how you set up Mailgun so that it works well and compliantly. Um, I hope this helped. If it helps, you know, watch uh, for the next video where I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail.